<clears throat> All right, thank you, Dean. And yeah, thank you to everyone for attending. Um, you know, just a little background on myself. Um, my name is Mark Mann. As Dean said, I'm the, the business development manager for terminals and fan coils, our air moving product category at Price Industries. Um, you know, I'm a, a mechanical engineer, originally from Canada, now living in the United States, uh, working out of our head office for Price Industries out of Atlanta. Uh, my career with Price has been doing research and development as a R&D engineer. Um, I worked as a product designer. Uh, I was an applications engineer, so answering questions from, from our sales rep force. Um, but really, by and large, those are questions that, that come from consulting engineers and contractors. Uh, I managed that team, and now I'm kind of in charge of, of strategy for, for fan coils, blower coils, and terminals. Uh, so a lot of background, and definitely happy to answer any questions throughout the webinar. We'll have some time to address some questions at the end, and then any questions that aren't addressed, uh, we will follow up in respond directly as well to whoever asked it. And just to make sure uh, the chat is working and people are paying attention, I'll, I'll maybe start off with a question for the group. And I'd like for everyone to, you know, respond and type their guesses into the chat. And the framing question, there's two of them. The first one is, if we were to rank every market in North America, uh, for fan coil sales, so number of dollars and number of units. Uh, it doesn't matter which metric we look at, the answer is the same. Where would Boston rank um, for markets? So one being the largest market, two being the second. Where does Boston fall? Write that answer into the chat. I'm interested to see uh, what you guys think as far as where Boston ranks as far as the largest markets. see 43 people attending on the line here. I'm not gonna expect 43 responses, but certainly without a doubt, I know I can see a few. So uh, type in and make sure you uh, have your send chat selected to not organizers only, but <clears throat> organizers and panelists. I'm set up as a panelist in this case presenting. So uh, write some responses into the chat here. So um, the reality is it's a very large market. Uh, there's only one market that's actually bigger and that's Miami. Uh, Miami being the largest fan coil market is really driven by, by load and by zone or in by um, the environment that we, we see in Miami. So when we look at, um, it's a zone one space. So uh, very humid, very hot and fan coils provide an excellent solution for that market. It's a different story in Boston, and I think there's a couple of reasons for it. One of the major reasons for it is um, Boston is a very architecturally driven market. There's very strong architecture presence in market. Architects are very engaged uh, with owners. The general cost per square foot for construction is of, of some of the highest in Boston that we see in all of North America. And that means engineers need to have really unique solutions. Um, the other is energy code. So we see New England in general trending faster towards decarbonization and electrification than we see in a lot of, a lot of other markets. And that combination of things, uh, I think, really makes fan coils a unique solution that provides a lot of value. It can deal with load. Uh, in the space very effectively, <clears throat> can integrate really quite seamlessly as far as architecturally, especially with the trend that we're seeing with um, kind of industrial architecture, more open ceilings. Um, I'm seeing less and less ceilings in projects in the New England market, and I think fan coils, from a visual perspective, integrates very well with that. The other question for the group, which is a little frame of reference, and then we'll dive in. Um, is one that Dean kind of set up as well. My question for the group is, does anyone know the last time uh, one of the large historical fan and blower coil manufacturers actually released a brand new product? And if anyone's thinking, oh, it must have been 20 years, it must have been 30 years, um, generally, for most manufacturers, that is the case. 
the last time we saw uh, a brand release a major new fan coil was, was Daikin uh, in the 2010s. Uh, we have a Nailer engineered comfort uh, single model that was also released, I think, about 10 years ago. And besides that, a lot of the development happened in the 90s and 2000s. So it's been quite a, quite a while. Uh, and I think that can kind of inform some of the performance we see out of historical product um, and is part of the reason why Price has decided to institute and implement new design solutions uh, for the market. And with that, we will jump in. I want to talk a little bit about the, the product category in general to give some framing for um, some of the unique solutions that, that we can offer um, from Buckley and from Price. So the first question that you know really we need to respond to here is what actually is a phantom blower coil? Hopefully this is familiar for most people online, but for any newer consulting engineers, um, you know, here's here's some good baseline info as well. The reality is a fan coil or a blower coil is going to impact the zone in numerous ways, um, but three are really what I would consider value add. Uh, we are going to condition air, so. A chilled water cooling coil is going to allow for not only sensible cooling and, and change with temperature, but it's also going to allow for dehumidification. So um, we're going to have that supply water temperature provided at a, a temperature below space dew point, which is going to allow that coil to um, actually condense and we're going to draw moisture out of, out of the airstream uh, and dehumidify. Second value add for us is heating. So uh, fan coils and blower coils most of the time are provided with some type of heating element. Uh, the most common when we look at the Boston market is certainly hydronic heating. That's representative of over 80% of fan coils that are sold to market. So using a, a heating coil, although an electric coil is also an option. Electric coils are uh, becoming less popular in market mostly because of energy efficiency requirements. An electric coil um, at best is 100% efficient. Electricity in and heat out, it is a resistive heating element. Uh, we expect to see more and more hydronic reheat provided into the Boston market. Uh, that's the trend that we see and we expect it to continue as more heat recovery chillers and uh, as we see more, you know, air source, ground source, water source heat pumps used, uh, the coefficient of performance for those can get up to, you know, potentially even as high as four, meaning we're getting four times more heat energy out than electricity in. So uh, much more efficient and therefore trending and much more popular. Last kind of positive benefit is indoor air quality. So we're going to be able to improve indoor air quality through a few, through two different methods really. Um, one would be air filtration, so providing a, a MERV 8 or a MERV 13 or even a MERV 14 filter um, on these products. The other would be ventilating. So many of these products are applied in you know, dedicated outdoor air system applications. Uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit about fresh air inlets and integrating a fresh air system uh, into these fan and blower coils, both from a kind of global perspective, which will be our next slide. And then also in particular, what fresh air options exist and what you might consider adding to product. Um, so the, the other byproducts of, of fan and blower coils, which we need to be considerate of are power consumption. Uh, so that's an especially important one with, with code requirements that we see in market. Um, so all of these have a fan and a motor, making sure that motor runs efficiently and is happy is really paramount to uh, making sure the whole building operates effectively. The other is acoustics. So we are going to generate sound from actually operating this product. Um, that's one of the things that we manage and handle very uniquely, and I would say very well with Price Industries product, and I'll talk about how, uh, how we manage that and why it's important. So when we look at how these products actually integrate into HVAC systems, there's really two ways to look at it. It's the air side and then the water side. Um, so starting with the air side here, there's two main 
ways that these integrate into the ducted system. The first, which we can see on the tops, top of the screen would be series ventilation. So the thought process and the methodology there is let's actually add our outdoor air directly into the fan coil and have a single path for supply air to enter the space through air outlets. From an application perspective, this is you know, very popular um, in DOAS applications. Uh, it's, it's definitely very popular in lab and life science, in healthcare, and it's becoming more and more popular as time goes on when we look at office applications too. Uh, there is some, some cost saving um, from integrating this ducted system together, some consolidation of, of duct mounted uh, components that can be really beneficial. Um, but it's historically not what the most common application was for fan coils, which is parallel ventilation we can see uh, below. So parallel ventilation has the fan coil uh, getting return air directly from the zone, conditioning it and resupplying it to the space. If we think about a room mounted fan coil uh, where we would have a fan coil you know, under a window or exposed mounted in the ceiling uh, with, a, with a painted and architecturally finished casing, those applications will also have another ducted system from an air handler that's gonna be providing outdoor air. And we still see a lot of popularity with this option. I would say primarily when we look at uh, institutional work, so dormitories, uh, hospitality work, so hotels, um, casinos, things of that nature. Um, and then we still see it in some cases, um, you know, in different zones within office or, or hospital uh, or other kinds of environments. So a fan coil and a vestibule, just kind of conditioning air within that vestibule is a very common and popular practice. The other way we can consider integration uh, of the fan coil into the HVAC system is the hydronic side. And the hydronic side is becoming continually more constrained uh, as we see supply hot water temperatures dropping uh, with the use of heat pumps and heat recovery chillers. And as we see chilled water temperatures rising as well, uh, as we're trying to reduce the lift of systems. So the supply uh, fluid temperature in comparison to kind of the ambient outdoor temperatures, we see that drop, our, our system lift is lower and it generally runs with a higher coefficient of performance. Those constraints uh, mean we need to be more considerate of how we design and apply the hydronic system within buildings. On the left, we can see a four pipe system. So a very basic four pipe system here. You know, we have a boiler and a chiller, both supplying um, supply water to a fan coil. And, and this would be considered a four pipe system. And therefore, we're going to have a four pipe fan coil. You can see the fan coil here has two different coils on the top left. Um, we could have that heating coil positioned upstream of the cooling coil. Um, that would be considered a preheat configuration, or we can flip the position of the two. We can have a coil uh, that's providing heat in a downstream position, which would be a reheat application. Now, why would we choose each? Which one's more important? Which one should we use? Uh, the good news for fan coils Generally, the decision doesn't have a lot of influence and weight to actual application and operation for the Boston market. In some cases, uh, we do see specific choices for four pipe systems uh, in other markets though. And that's really for the same reason we would see preheat or reheat on an air handler. Uh, if we have a draw through kind of makeup air style blower coil, uh, we still do see in, in all markets uh, a preheat configuration um, can help temper air during the colder months to make sure that that cool, uh, cooling coil, chilled water coil wouldn't freeze. Um, and we see that applied with fan coils in some cases as well. When we look at a reheat configuration, some markets would use both coils at the same time to dehumidify and temper air so we can treat a latent load without um, doing too much sensible cooling. We do see that more and more in uh, states with really less constraints on energy code. Uh, it happens more as you move southeast through the country, uh, but isn't something that is really a feasible application for um, Massachusetts. And on the right, we also have a two-pipe solution, so a hot-cold changeover coil. 
Um, this would be a two pipe coil, a single coil that would be used for either heating or for cooling. The diagram in the bottom right shows kind of a special three pipe uh, water control system, which is less typical. Um, that is used on medium and small commercial projects, fit out projects. Primarily, we would still see four pipes to supply to return and then just uh, change over valves located directly at the fan coil. Um, this is becoming more popular as our supply hot water temperatures are dropping. Anecdotally, I've seen a lot of projects with air source heat pumps where maybe we only have 100 degree supply water. So having a larger heating coil, heating apparatus uh, can be very beneficial to the design of the building. When we look at integration to the HVAC system, we also need to be very considerate of the duct system and the way that that impacts and influences fan and blower coil performance. So in this case, you know, we have a, an office zone, a little conference room, and we could have a quiet, high performance fan coil mounted above the ceiling. And we need to be considerate of the return ductwork and the influence and in, uh, increase of return static pressure drop as we start to see that duct run grow or as we start to see velocity increase through that duct run. Um, that is negative pressure because the fan is actually acting as a vacuum sucking air through that, uh, through that duct work. And we also have to be considerate of downstream static pressure. So the static pressure drop of downstream duct, uh, duct fittings and diffusers, those two things together are really the engineer's responsibility to evaluate and, and look at. Because as we see external static pressure increase, uh, we're going to see more power consumption and more sound generated. At price, we're doing everything we can to reduce and drop internal pressure drop as much as possible. So looking at low pressure filters, low pressure water coils, and lower pressure casing geometry. Uh, if we can reduce internal pressure, that allows for more available external static pressure uh, for you guys to work with as design engineers. So another question for the group, um, can anyone write into the chat here, and please make sure you're sending it to organizers and panelists here, uh, can anyone suggest what the differences between fan coils and blower coils actually are? So any thoughts as to what the difference between a fan coil and a blower coil is? So there's actually many applicable answers here. Um, you know, the reality is blower coils are traditionally larger. Uh, they supply higher uh, CFMs and they can work through higher total static pressures. Uh, a fan coil is much smaller, lower CFM, and generally is installed with shorter duct runs or maybe almost no duct run at all with integrated supply air outlets or return air outlets directly into the product. Uh, where they're installed is also a considerable difference between the two. So a blower coil, uh, by the nature of its size, its configuration, and also its, uh, the, the sound it generates, is often above acoustical ceilings or in mechanical rooms where a fan coil can actually be mounted exposed directly in the space. Uh, we can break those paradigms and we'll talk about how and why you might choose to do that and how you can address acoustical concerns. Uh, but those are some of the major differences However, I think one of the most impactful differences between the two is the position of the coil and the fan with respect to one another. Uh, this is confusing based off of the nomenclature, but blower coils are traditionally a draw-through product, while fan coils are traditionally a blow-through product. So to look at that in a bit more detail, we have a blower coil, the price BCHD on the left. Uh, we can see air enters the coil moves through the casing and is discharged out the supply fan, where on the right we have a blow-through product. So we have air interact with that fan first, uh, move through the casing and discharge out the coil. Now, why does this matter? Uh, why would a, a mechanical consultant care? Uh, well, the, the change in kind of configuration of those components influences the construction of the equipment. Generally, blower coils are heavier gauge, heavier duty, more sealed. Uh, while fan coils can have some lighter gauge material um, by the nature of their construction. And the real, the real reason for that is the pressurization of the casing. 
So a draw-through product like we see on the left is a negatively pressurized casing. That means we're gonna need a fully internal drain pan. Uh, we're going to need to provide a P-trap on that drain pan. Uh, we need to overcome the internal static pressure drop with hydrostatic pressure in order to properly manage condensate. On the right, the positively pressurized fan, uh, fan coil is gonna have drain slots in the bottom of the coil section and the nature of the product is it needs some leakage out of those coils because it needs fluid to be able to drain through it. In this case, the positive pressure is going to push that fluid out through those drain slots and into an exposed neutral press, press, uh, pressure drain pan. We're gonna be able to manage condensate much more easily at that point. Um, it would actually dra drain with gravity, although we traditionally see these still installed with some kind of condensate pump uh, in both cases, just because it's, it's good practice. And um, the worst thing we can have is leaks or, or fluid kind of at large within a building. We need to make sure we manage that effectively. Other differences, a draw through product, if we look at like a makeup air application is, is possible because we're able to condition the air before it actually uh, interacts with the, the motor, which has more temperature limitations. So we see a larger entering air temperature range for draw through product. Um, and I would also argue, especially when we look at DOAS applications, draw through products are a little bit more ideal. And I wanna look at why that's the case. So on the left, we have our draw-through product, and on the right, we have our blow-through product. And my argument would be a draw-through product is generally more effective for DOAS application cooling. Now, you might think why, and really what it comes down to is what we would call the log mean temperature difference of the heat exchanger. So the heat exchanger wants to maximize the delta T from the water side and the air side of the heat exchanger. We can envision this by kind of setting a few parameters. So if we imagine we had a heat exchanger with 55 degree air and 180 degree water, I think we can all accept and agree that's gonna be more effective than the same heat exchanger with 55 degree air and 60 degree water. As the fluid temperatures approach one another, there's less potential for heat transfer. So the larger we can make that difference between water side and air side temperatures, the more efficient our, our heat transfer will be. And the easiest way to look at this is just by applying a few numbers to it. So in this case, we have our fan set to supply 1000 CFM in both cases. We have 250 CFM of outdoor air at 55 degrees, and we have 750 uh, CFM of, of return air at 75 degrees. Now, when we look at the product on the left, um, that return air is essentially going to be hitting the coil directly, 75 degree air, uh, 750 CFM. And that means we're gonna have uh, a more elevated uh, entering air temperature into the coil. The one on the right, we're gonna see 750 CFM at 75 degrees mixed with 55 degree, 250 CFM air for 70 degrees, and 1,000 CFM total. So a greater overall mass, but a lower entering air temperature, which means that coil is gonna run a little bit less efficiently. Um, this is opposite for heating. So heating, we sometimes see blow through products operate a little bit more efficiently, although heating tends to be less constrained uh, and lower loads generally than we see on the cooling side. There's also options for a um, a, a blow through heating option with a draw through cooling product on blower coils, uh, although that is not something that we see on fan coils. So that's a little background, and now I want to talk more specifically about some product and application. Um, and the context for this is really the product roadmap for Price Industries, uh, which I think is some good framing. Um, so when we look at the fan coils available in market, you know, it's often horizontal kind of more so commodity or high performance fan coils, uh, vertical kind of commodity and higher performance fan coils, and then blower coils. Um, when we look at historical price product, we see a lot of specification of 
our FCHG high performance, low profile fan coil, which is a very niche product, uh, very specially engineered. I like to kind of consider it as a tailor-made suit in many respects. Uh, it gets specified a lot in New England, um, but it is very unique when looking at the products from other manufacturers. As of now, uh, Price Industries has the whole horizontal offering standard and available. So exposed commodity horizontal units, uh, concealed galvanized steel products that would be up behind a ceiling, um, both ducted or unducted. Below we have the FHP, which is kind of the big brother product of that. So up to 2,800 CFM instead of 1,200 CFM. And then in the bottom left, we have our ECM direct drive blower coil, which is uh, even higher performance, um, up to 4,400 CFM, higher static pressures as well. As of last week, we actually released a, a new update to our direct drive blower coil offering. Um, for anyone who works with price fan coils historically, you're probably familiar with our integral attenuator options that allow for a baffled attenuator to be mounted directly onto the unit. We've now released that for our blower coil as well as um, factory mounted piping packages too. Other products on the screen as well are actually finished products that have sold to market, been commissioned, and are just getting integrated into software. Um, but that's kind of the next year for us, and I want to talk about a few of those products as well, uh, starting with the vertical products. So when we look at institutional work and dormitories uh, and even kind of, you know, K through 12 schools, the, the vertical under window fan coil is a very popular option. It provides uh, 200 to 1200 CFM um, and comes in a painted exposed offering, um, a concealed one that would kind of hide behind some kind of other architectural finish, whether that's drywall or some built out plenum or, or mounting location and then we have the the exposed which is both flat top and slope top slope top really just stopping occupants from pace, placing potentially books or bags or whatever we'd see even dormitories you know ideally not installing a hot plate on top of the fan coil um, so we see that very frequently used in institutional work the other product is our vertical direct drive blower coil uh, which is up to 4,000 CFM uh, vertical integrations for that unit, very commonly supplied in a mechanical closet. And both these products are, are getting used quite a bit in industry already. I was actually just meeting with Vanderbilt University this morning for a couple new dormitories on their campus um, where, where they use and will be using on these new dormitories our, our vertical commodity unit. Uh, the unit on the right, is installed in another a number of applications as well some noteworthy ones being the uh, apple campus in cupertino california that that big kind of ufo shaped building is using those in mechanical rooms as well as uh, usc uh, all over their campus especially in dorm buildings uses that product too um, the vertical blower coil is not very common in the boston market i think primarily uh, because of its utilization and installation, mostly just in mechanical rooms. It's a, a lower run rate unit that you all may find you see less frequently in market. We're also working on horizontal development. So uh, in the bottom left, we can see a shake test actually for our blower coil. Uh, our blower coil is seismically rated as well as all of our other fan coils. So. Uh, for anyone who does any work in the Connecticut Valley area, uh, there are some seismic requirements for that um, part of New England, but really it, it comes up more so on the West Coast. The only reason to address it and, and kind of speak to it is it does speak to build quality. So in that bottom left, we're seeing a magnitude 9 equivalent earthquake for that shake test. I'll play that again as we move through it there. You can look and see that video. Um, and so it really speaks to the build quality of the product. Uh, we're the only manufacturer to have seismic certification for all of our products, um, whereas only Train has it for their blower coil otherwise. And we're continuing to redevelop that blower coil and add new options. Uh, one that we'll be releasing this year, which is also um, getting used on a St. Jude's Hospital project, as well as some large um, tower projects in downtown Los Angeles is what we're calling our BHP model, which is using a plenum fan. So uh, the real kind of point of that product 
is you can almost think of it as custom indoor air handler um, operation, but at about a quarter of the price point. Um, the other kind of main application we imagine seeing that used is uh, with DX coils as, as kind of a split system indoor air handler. Um, that will serve up to 6,000 CFM and is really double the static pressure of a traditional blower coil at half the acoustical output and far less power consumption. We started to learn a lot about plenum fans because of the product on the left, which is um, a product that's called our high air change unit. And it was actually installed as a fan or generated and created as a fan coil for operating rooms. Um, and in particular, this was for the Abbott Hospital um, in Minneapolis. Um, so just outside of Minneapolis in New Hope, Minnesota. And this product was a requirement from the hospital because they actually wanted to run their operating rooms uh, at 60 air changes rather than the code required 18 to 24. And they wanted that for a few reasons. Uh, the first was with additional airflow, um, load could be managed with a lower uh, or with an elevated supply air temperature. Uh, we found and heard from surgeons and nurses and surgery support staff that in order to make the room uh, a comfortable temperature, uh, below the laminar flow diffusers, they were actually finding that the room or the supplier was too cold. And even though it was laminar flow, um, it was almost verging on feeling a little drafty. And that's not ideal, uh, especially if you imagine, you know, I, I don't want my surgeon to be too cold. Um, so they wanted to elevate the supplier volume and with that also elevate the, the supply uh, air temperature and cooling. The other byproduct of that that was managed very well is actually um, you know, surgery uses a lot of cauterization tools for sealing of internal lesions. So instead of stitches, it would use cauterization tools that actually create in a, and accumulate smoke within the room. Uh, so cauterization smoke, which is, um, you know, a little gross, so I apologize for that. Um, but that product was developed in order to increase those air change rates. A nice byproduct of this is it's actually a fantastic product with its 180 degree bend that we can see on the upper left hand side of the screen of, of this slide uh, here. That 180 degree bend actually makes it a great um, solution as well for high internal load spaces, high sensible internal load spaces like compounding pharmacies and server rooms and things of that nature. Uh, and we've actually seen more applications for it uh, for, for those requirements moving forward. So uh, compounding pharmacies and server rooms being two really critical spaces that are often very duct constrained uh, and ceiling constrained. So that 180 degree bend saves a lot of uh, duct routing and therefore duct cost as well. So a recap for us here uh, on those horizontal products. And the reason why I prioritize talking about these horizontal products to a degree is really because it's 85% of the Boston market. So it's probably what primarily uh, all of you would be seeing most frequently. And what we have is engineered products on the left. Uh, so the blower coil, which we discussed, um, and then commodity products on the right. So the horizontal low profile and horizontal high performance units on the right, which come with exposed painted architectural cabinets or hideaway style units as well. The only other one is that FCHG, FCHGQ product, which we'll look at in a little bit more detail here shortly with a specific um, application discussion. But yeah, that product is really kind of the tailor-made suit, uh, higher supplier volumes, uh, draw through or blow through, um, duct mounted attenuators on the inlet side and discharge side as options, uh, fresh air inlets and mixing box boxes, very configurable, uh, very nice for the consultant engineer just because it's kind of a one size fits all, a very configurable unit, um, but at a bit of a higher price point, which is part of what I want to discuss as well. So the real nature for showing this slide to consulting engineers is to mostly communicate uh, that manufacturers have a responsibility, I think, to provide a what I would consider a good, better, best option. So commodity style units, um, kind of 
elevated units with more features and options and heavier duty construction and then ideally kind of even the, the higher end units which are more configurable um, you know ideally provide some value to the project whether it's space constraints or footprint or different configurations um, and so that's what we see on screen here the fch and fhp product are what we would consider the lowest price point still fantastic products uh, you know, EC motors, all the coil options, but a little bit lower price point. Um, that can then be elevated to a blower coil, which has more features, options, and capability with some sturdier case and construction. And then maybe the premium option up top in the FCHG. The goal is to be able to provide options in all of those categories for, for all supply airflow rates we see regularly. So I did note we'd spend a little time on a particular project solution. In this case, it's the John A. Paulson Center, which is the New York University project in Manhattan, which houses the Tisch School of Arts and Steinhardt School of Arts. Um, and this project was an interesting one because it was very acoustically constrained, needing high load spaces, providing up to 32,000 BTUs of space sensible cooling in single fan coil units while also only being NC30. There are other spaces within this building as well, like sports facilities, classrooms, uh, administrative and student apartments that use some different solutions and lower cost solutions. Um, but the way that they manage high load, very acoustically comfortable spaces was with the FCHG product, which we can see on the bottom left. Uh, this product's an interesting one because of its unique geometry to sound attenuator on the discharge of the product. Uh, a sound attenuator is cataloged and tested to ASTM E477, and that silencer uh, standard actually requires five equivalent duct diameters of straight duct upstream and 10 equivalent duct diameters of straight duct downstream to catalog performance. In this case, we actually integrated into the fan coil and tested as a solution, which means you don't need to manage install conditions uh, in straight duct as a design engineer. Uh, you can just mount it as a fan coil and know that it will be quiet even with a non-ideal entering conditions and system effect. And so this product was used for theater spaces. These are actual install uh, photos of, of the actual building. Um, we can see even that middle bottom photo is a very interesting space because that is a music rehearsal area as well as a dance rehearsal area. So that space could have a very high uh, latent and sensible people load at times, but then also a lower load and requirements to be very quiet. And they managed it with that product, uh, the FCHGQ. <clears throat> Fundamentally, how this was actually achievable though, um, was mock-up testing. So actual testing of the product at price facilities. Um, and we can do that. We have a 40,000 square foot lab at our Canadian head office in Winnipeg, Manitoba with two reverberation chambers, silencer testing chambers, psychometric testing chambers, et cetera. And so that we use this reverberant room to test various duct conditions, um, you know, different duct plenums, multiple sizes, um, you know, draw through and blow through configurations. And that really provided the acoustician and engineer all the data they needed to really make a, a, a very low risk, um, high value recommendation for product. Something also noteworthy to the engineers on the line here, um, testing is something that we're happy to do at Price Industries. Um, you know, generally, as long as we're based of design on the project, uh, we're happy to do testing to help validate and verify interesting performance requirements. Uh, some other key projects for these blower coils, JFK Terminal 1 in New York is, is utilizing our new blower coil due to its capabilities to integrate very well with the DOAS. Uh, application. And the interesting thing with this one in particular was the custom enclosures and wiring for components that we saw um, for this project. So multiple um, hydronic valves, you know, differential pressure transducers for accurate low flow outdoor air measurement and demand controlled ventilation, um, discharge air temperature probes, carbon dioxide sensors, the whole gambit all installed and shipped as a single assembly to site. 
Another good example, and one that's more um, representative of kind of the commodity type product would be uh, the University of Georgia dormitories, um, which is actually very close to where I'm located here in Atlanta. In this project, they had some interesting constraints where uh, these were retrofit projects. There was a lot of uh, air infiltration through the envelope. Um, they were wanting to retrofit and manage costs on the project. And so what they actually ended up being provided and requesting from us was a custom coil that could actually integrate um, two discharge air temperature probes, uh, one sandwiched between a cooling and a heating coil and the other downstream for the total unit supply air temperature. And this allowed for them to run a dehumidification uh, sequence of operation in particular. And uh, generally most manufacturers to save costs would integrate the cooling and heating coil into one fin pack. It allows it to move through production um, a little bit more easily and it's easier to manufacture it. Spacing those coils out uh, is a harder task, but one in this case that provided a lot of value to the project in order to actually allow for that dehumidification to take place. And once again, this was something that required rigorous testing uh, in our lab up in Winnipeg, in this case in our psych chamber, which can provide about 10% to 100% relative humidity um, 35 to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit within the space, and then supply water temperatures from 30 to a 210 degree Fahrenheit as well. So I want to speak to some project different or product differentiators. Some of the things that we've implemented in these new products that can help provide value to consulting engineers. Uh, the biggest thing is the integral attenuator or silencer. Uh, and Price Industries is the only manufacturer who can actually provide this solution as a standard option. Um, you know, many of you have perhaps have specified or approved submittals for a fan coil and a standalone duct attenuator like a vibroacoustics or something similar. But as I noted previously, um, <clears throat> when we look at actually close coupling a duct attenuator onto uh, a piece of equipment. Sometimes it doesn't operate quite as intended. Anecdotally, I've had a project that I worked on where there was duct attenuators uh, close coupled to equipment and they actually created kazoos instead of silencers. And that's because these are heavily baffled, you know, more heavy duty built pieces of equipment, these, these duct silencers. And the reality is they actually generate noise. Uh, they have an insertion loss. They, they take out more noise than they generate. But the truth of the matter is um, they're tested with five equivalent duct diameters, which we almost never see on projects. My general rule of thumb recommendation is have at least two feet upstream or two duct diameters if you can get it is, is really nice. Um, but generally we don't see that. And if we're close coupling that to a fan, it can be very problematic. So a good example of this would be the AstraZeneca mock-up that we just performed in January. There is a new AstraZeneca project um, being built in Cambridge. Uh, BR plus A is working on that one. Uh, HOK being the architect and then an acoustician from the West Coast. And this is a very large project um, that has open ceilings and it's a, a lab office split building. And the open ceiling zones required up to 1400 CFM, and in some cases as low as NC30. So harsh acoustical constraints with very high load. And in order to manage this, uh, you know, Price and Buckley and BR plus A in partnership decided the best way to really proceed would actually just be to mock up and build this. So uh, we actually built this ducted system with a couple different pieces of equipment actually in our facilities in, in Winnipeg. And in this case, it was an open ceiling install, very representative and, and close to what would be envisioned on the AstraZeneca project. However, um, not as pretty and a little bit more rugged. It's a, it's a testing mock-up space, um, a little bit louder than what would be seen in AstraZeneca as far as background noise being located close to a factory. And uh, additionally, a little bit different from a space constraint perspective. So, installed two different products. Um, well, we installed multiple products. We installed slot, slot diffusers, the Price SDS model, um, plenums, um, duct silencers as specified and laid out in the, the mechanical plans. 
but two large pieces of phantom blower coil equipment uh, our Genesis high performance FCHG fan coil and our direct drive um, draw through blower coil to BCHD. A really cool part of this partnership and this project was we actually managed to develop a brand new uh, solution for open return plenums from this project, which we can see in the left hand side of the screen a photo and a line drawing um, from the submittal for that product, which is the RDDL, essentially an engineered acoustical boot. That engineered acoustical boot, um, you know, it actually has an acoustical baffle inside that was sized and developed looking at and, and doing computational fluid dynamics to uh, maximize the insertion loss of this option while minimizing its pressure drop. And it actually has negligible pressure drop, uh, no impact to, to cooling performance uh, with the way that it's sized and placed but a reduction of six to eight NC for open ceiling applications on these, these heavy fan coils and blower coils. So the best option from this mock-up, which tested uh, eight different configurations of product with different attenuation options, was the direct drive blower coil, uh, which was actually measured to be a sound pressure of NC31, uh, which is expected to be closer to NC28 for 1400 CFM fully open ceiling and no external duct wrap uh, at all. So just raw product uh, with an attenuation option from the manufacturer, 1400 CFM and only NC28. So for anyone on the line who's finding there's constraints in market with, um, you know, really acoustics and fan coils integrating together, uh, please reach out to Buckley and engage with them as we definitely have solutions that are available to market. Other things to note um, for kind of these products, one key option accessory, uh, a choice would be insulation. So high level rule of thumb, some guidance from the manufacturer, we might say um, fiberglass for acoustics is best. Um, whenever you can manage to use fiberglass liner, you're gonna generally yield the quietest room and see for most applications. Um, it is extremely acoustically absorptive. It really helps reduce duct noise uh, and manages radiated noise very well too. Now I know there's a lot of lab life science healthcare work that happens in market in Boston and whenever we default to those applications uh, a fiber free poly polymer foam um, doesn't have any fibers that are exposed to the airstream and really allows for a cleanable surface um, you know allows for antimicrobial uh, cleaners to be used on the product if required uh, and is really quite quite a good solution for healthcare and lab applications while still impacting and influencing acoustics. Solid metal liner is available on some products so that's a dual wall uh, liner and I've seen this specified a lot by engineers with the hope that it's actually going to mitigate sound. It's definitely true that it's the quietest option for ducted solutions, but if you have a unducted return, um, my kind of word of warning is it won't perform quite as you expect. We may see less sound breaking out of the casing, but we will see more sound reflecting out of the return. And usually that yields uh, a louder application um, in general. So that's kind of my word of warning and rule of thumb. If it's a ducted application, the solid metal liners, the the best option for acoustics, um, for open plenum returns, it might in fact be the worst option. Another thing which I'd like to note is the filter selections and choices uh, that we're using for our products. So something that's kind of ironic and, and you know, was a little counterintuitive to me is that larger uh, filter depths and thicknesses actually result in, um, lower pressure drop and that's because these filters are pleated so if we look at pleats with a one inch thickness versus a deeper pleat for a two inch thickness and apologies for my scribbling on screen but it helps to communicate it uh, the effective surface area of a thicker option is actually much larger as well so it's a little counterintuitive but the thicker the filter the lower the pressure drop and we've integrated thickest possible filter into every product that we can. So a standard two inches whenever applicable, 
Uh, so FCHGs, FCHPs, FCVEs, all of these two inch products. Um, there's a few one inch options that are height constrained for bottom returns. Uh, and then in some other cases, we even step up to a four inch filter as an option, as you'd see on our, our direct drive blower coil. The byproduct of that is lower pressure drop, which means you could have longer duct runs, you could have a higher supply air volume. Um, but most importantly, and I think where it makes the most sense is two different realities. Um, an up and kind of upper improvement in IAQ with, with the utilization of a MERV 13 instead of a MERV 8, which could be a value to owners. But most importantly, uh, a much happier fan and much lower acoustics and lower power consumption. So when we look at trying to reduce energy consumption, uh, the thicker the filter, probably the better the solution. Another thing we're doing a little differently with our fan and blower coils at price is additional rows of cooling and heating wherever applicable. And this really results in energy efficient solutions and cost effective solutions. Uh, it results in energy efficient solutions because we can get an additional row of heating and we could potentially get a much healthier water side delta T for a heat pump or for a heat recovery chiller that allows it to operate much more efficiently or uh, it's gonna provide a cost-effective solution because you as a design engineer with a high load application might be able to stay with a smaller size and footprint and lower cost piece of equipment uh, with more rows rather than upsizing. So for instance, you could have a size 20 BCHD with eight rows of coil instead of a size 30 BCHD with six rows of coil. Um, and that's an option that's available with those additional coil rows that can help save uh, a cost and energy uh, on projects. And one of the last options here I wanna discuss, I have two to go, but one is the fresher and lead and transducer options. So we are seeing more DOAS applications with fan coils. And when we see these DOAS applications, I think it's really noteworthy to, to understand that once again, there's good, better, best. Uh, we could have a separate ducted system with a single duct unit. We could have um, a raw inlet into a fan coil. We could have a constant volume solution. So that's what we see in the bottom left. This is the Aldez car, which is an option from price for passive control, um, no motorized actuator, and plus or minus 10% accuracy. Or we could have a variable volume, higher accuracy solution in the price SP300 Crossflow. Um, you know, there are many products that look like this in market, um, and ours is actually patented. And it's patented specifically for improved accuracy with non-ideal conditions. This is going to amplify duct pressure, um, allow for a more resilient pressure signal, and it's going to work even if we have bad inlet conditions. So this is testing that we actually did recently for a project. And you can see with this testing, uh, we have the actual airflow that would be measured um, on this kind of yellow dotted line. And then we have at a number of different points airflow measured after testing and balancing with the crossflow sensor. And in this case, it's actually plus or minus 1% with an elbow directly in front of the unit uh, with a 90 degree elbow at the inlet. The same product, the same uh, crossflow sensor but a straight duct connection, uh, we can see once again, plus or minus 1%. So really almost no influence in this case from duct install whatsoever. The last thing I wanna close out with is, is piping packages. Um, so piping packages are more common on fan coils uh, to come from the factory than, than what we would see on a lot of other products like a, a classic reheat valve. And these, the, the big reality here is whatever you specify as a engineer, whatever your piping schematic is, um, really that option is available on a fan coil as well. Um, my only pitch, and the one thing I wanna note, is maybe a bit of a recommendation on why specifying auto balancing valves makes some sense instead of manual balancing valves. And the reality is, it's a few things. Uh, first of all, these are pressure independent 
fluid control orifices. So that means there's no manual balancing rev uh, required at each automatic valve. It's using a, compress a compression spring to maintain flow rate through the range of pressure. Um, and it's only actually required at the terminal. So we can remove uh, more balancing valves upstream on risers or takeoffs or you know, branches um, when we use auto versus manual valves. Manual valves are about 30% less expensive. So about 30% less. The reality is the, the cost and labor associated with system balancing generally outweighs the broader solution and the cost effectiveness of it. So that's kind of my appeal to the group here. Um, and with that, we're pretty much right on time. So um, I do want to note, and I, I didn't want to get us too behind here, but I am having some issues seeing uh, information in the chat. Um, what I really want to address there is if you do have any questions, uh, I'll go through them and Buckley will go through them together and we'll respond to uh, everyone who asked any questions directly. I am struggling to see some of them here. So if you asked a good question and didn't hear an answer, I apologize. It's it's not because I didn't like your question. It's, it's just some technical difficulties on my end actually having it pop up. Um, but with that, I do want to thank everyone for attending. Uh, it's great to have a group of over 50 consulting engineers together to, to talk about and hear uh, about new product. So thank you to everyone. Have a lovely Wednesday afternoon. Uh, thanks from Price Industries and Buckley. And for anyone who asked any of those questions in the chat, we'll be sure to get a response out to you uh, and sent via email over the next week. So thank you very much. And I hope all of you have a lovely day.